Okay, so welcome to our yoga and gentle Qigong class this morning. Let's take a comfortable seat and tune into the breath. It's good to have so many of you here together this June morning. I don't know what it's like in your neck of the woods, but in Grass Valley, it's chilly this morning. <laughs> I left the windows open and um, it definitely cooled, cooled off in here last night. It's good, I guess, to have this cool summer weather. Beautiful blue sky. So tune into your breath and feel into your body and what your body has been doing this over this last couple days. I realized that I went paddleboarding this weekend and boy, those myofascial slings that we work on from one shoulder to the opposite foot. Wow, we use those and our abdominal core when we paddleboard. Feel into your body and any aha moments that you had over the weekend. I had a student tell me last week that she's using her square, she's using her banks of the river when she shovels dirt out of a wheelbarrow in her yard. So how do we connect what we do here in class to our everyday movements? Let's begin this with the breath. Invite the breath deep towards your pelvic floor. Feel for the movement of the diaphragm, ballooning down into the abdomen on the inhale, mushrooming up under the lungs on the exhale. We want these deeper breaths for several reasons. One is that a breath that moves the diaphragm massages the vagus nerve and activates our parasympathetic nervous system, which can help us relax and rest into our days. As the parasympathetic nervous system turns on, the endocrine system realizes it doesn't need to pump stress hormones into the body. So we invite a deep breath whenever we need one to calm and regulate our system. We invite the breath to become three-dimensional and fill the circumference of the torso. This way, when we activate core muscles to support the spine, we activate them all the way around the spine. If we don't know how to breathe three-dimensionally, it's harder to activate the muscles around the core. We invite the breath deep into the body, but that doesn't mean we try to take the largest breath we can. Most people over breathe in our culture, which throws off our carbon dioxide and oxygen balance. So we invite in fluid breath. We invite space between the ribs. And we recognize this pranayama as an essential part of the practice. In yoga, prana is our life force. We invite it in through the breath. 
And then we help it move with the poses. In Qigong, the pictogram of chi is a steaming bowl of rice. The rice representing sustenance and the steam representing breath. Breathe into the back body. Breathe into the side waists. Breathe into the side ribs. Breathe up into the armpits. Breathe in and buoy the front heart. Let your head rest back slightly and let that front heart lift as the tailbone grounds. Feel for an expansion across the chest. And simultaneously breathe into the belly. Simultaneously breathe into the low back. Fluid breath. Let's inhale the hands to the heart and ride these waves of breath. Ride them into our practice today. Namaste. Okay, let's come to standing. And let's gently rock. Let your arms just hang easy and loose. There's no need to move the body, to force it. Notice if you're forcing your hands to move at the elbow. Instead, just let the arms sway. Really let go of the arms. And let the sway of the arms come with the movement of the legs. There we go, beautiful. Really, just let them go. You don't have to control it. They don't have to swing far. Just feel into how they swing when you let them go and sway from foot to foot. Let go of the neck a little. Feel the head move in response to the movement of the feet. And see how many movements to the inhale and how many movements to the exhale. Maybe it's inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Maybe you go three. Maybe you go two for the inhale and three for the exhale. Find your own rhythm. And invite that life force into the gently swing fingertips at the bottom of your arms that are just letting go. They're practicing letting go. You don't need that tension in your shoulders right now, in your elbows or your wrists or your palms. And notice how as you swing, you may start to feel some tingling and some energy in the fingers. 
And then let's pause and inhale the arms up to the left and exhale them down to the right. Come into these cycles and circles. The circling of the moon. The cycles of day and night. How those cycles are influenced by the season. Still, be as gentle as you can in the movement of the arms. Let it be organic, coming up from the lower dantian in the pelvis, from the roots of your feet. And then let your hands rest at the bottom and let's circle them up the other way. And think of the youngest person you know. And think of the people who've already moved on in the cycle of life. And where we are in the cycle. Can we accept where we are? This moment, this breath, this movement, this unique day. And then let's pause the arms in Wuji. Fluid breath. And let's move through our brocades Inhaling the arms up overhead. Exhale, land the palms on the top of your head. And then inhale, press the palms skyward. And exhale, release the arms. And we inhale, the arms rise. And we exhale, the palms land on the top of the head. And this time, as we inhale, we just press the knuckles skyward. And we exhale and release. And we alternate, we inhale up and we exhale, relaxing the shoulders and elbows. And we inhale, stretch the palms skyward. They don't have to stay interlaced and exhale. And if you need to modify, please do. Inhale up and exhale, relax. And inhale, stretch the knuckles, the backs of the hands skyward and release. And a few more cycles. Inhaling, arms lift. Exhaling, relax. Inhaling, stretch. Exhaling, release. Inhale, lift. Exhale, relax. Inhale, back to the hands skyward. Stretch from the feet and release. And pause in your Wuji, resting onto your heels. Inviting a sense of boundarylessness. Shoulders relaxed, face relaxed. Let the arms gently begin to swing around the body. Again, can you really let go of any control over the arms? This is a practice. We're so active in our lives, we forget to let go and let the muscles relax in traction. And then let one hand come up and gently knock the lung as the other gently knocks the kidneys, knocking on the door of life. This life in this moment. Fluid motion and breath. Feel into the fascia of your body. How does it stretch as you gently twist? Knocking on the door of life, getting the energy flowing through those meridians. And then let the arms swing again. Relax the fingers in the thumbs, the palms and the wrists, the elbows, and shoulders all the muscles of the arms, 
and then slowly come back to stillness and your Wuji boundary lifts. And let's begin class today with the cosmic person stretching your arms wide and imagining they go on into infinite space, rooting your feet and reaching your head skyward. Let yourself extend feet deep into the earth, head into the heavens, arms around the planet and beyond. And let your skin stretch open and the pores open and the energy flow through and the stagnant energy flow out. Stay with your breath. Fill the universe with your body. Let the energy move through you. And then draw the hands back slowly to the heart. Step your feet together so you come back into the seed pot of your own skin. Standing on the earth, conduits of energy between earth and sky, release your arms and inhale the backs of the hands up the center channel and exhale, press the arms out, looking left, take an inhale, exhale across to the right and take an inhale. Exhale, release your wings and inhale the arms up the center channel of the body and exhale, press and take an inhale as you look right, and exhale across to the left, and inhale left, and exhale, release the arms, and roll one shoulder up and back, the other shoulder up and back, and invite the fascia to stretch open. Feel into your rib cage and your spine. This moving shoulders, inviting those areas to stretch open. Let the elbow circle back. Really feel into the inner landscape and invite it to become open and spacious, full of pranic energy, life force. And let your arms spin and lengthen. If that's comfortable, you could stay with the rolling shoulder. Do what's best for your body. And then pause with your hands up beneath your armpits, palms down, and try to rest your shoulders. And then inhale, look out over your right shoulder. Exhale around to look out over the left shoulder. And inhale right. And exhale left. And stay with the breath. And now try and inhale right and keep inhaling left. Exhale right. And exhale left. And don't crank it, but let the eyes even turn to look out the corners. We want mobility throughout the body. And then come back to center and step wide onto your horse and bring your hands back to back. Fingers circling over the thumbs. We're moving through the brocades, taking the right elbow back, left palm forward, circle, pinky ring, and middle fingers into your palm. And let your gaze rest out over the index finger. Fluid breath. Relaxing shoulders. Press the right arm forward and draw the bowstring back. And exhale, release, and inhale, draw. And let the movement help you invite more breath into the torso, into the three dimensions of the body. Slow it down and move with the full breath, inviting the breath deep into the torso. And then pause as you've pulled it back and continue to breathe. Deep into the belly, the side waist, the low back. Feel for the diaphragm moving. And then release the arms back to back, the hands, fingers around the thumbs. And press out the right arm. Draw the left elbow back. 
and pause, circling pinky ring and middle fingers into the palm. Relax the shoulders. Feel the strength of your legs as the feet root. And exhale, left arm forward and inhale, draw the bowstring. And exhale and inhale. And really concentrate on drawing in the inhale with the movement of the arm and filling the torso. Express the air out on the exhale as you let go the bowstring. And then pause and hold the position with your breath still moving and relaxing the shoulders. And coming back to center, fingers wrapped around the thumbs, hands back to back, sitting on your horse. Feel into your rooting feet, the strength of your legs. And come back to standing. Feet even, bring your hands to your buttocks. And let your hands Wash down the backs of your legs towards your Achilles tendon and heel. And then inhale, draw back up and lift the buttocks, lift the heart, lift the gaze, lift to the balls of the feet. And exhale, release back down. And inhale, come back up and lift. And exhale, wash back down. Inhale up, move at your own pace now. Exhaling. And inhaling. And then land in Wuji and pause with your breath. Relax, boundaryless. Invite the breath into the pores of your skin. And step your feet wide and ground them, ground them. Bear frolics, palms up. We exhale left and inhale center and exhale right and inhale center through the nostrils. It's quick and then inhale, quick and then inhale, pressed exhale, inhale, pressed exhale, inhale. Pause. You can stay with that arm motion. Feel the whole sole of your feet open onto the floor. Think of yourself as rooted and grounded like a bear. Or you can bring your hands to the heart and push to the left, hands to the heart, push to the right, hands to the heart. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Pause with your hands at the heart. Feel your heels ground into your heels, your big toe ball mounds, your pinky toe ball mounds. Feel earthy. And your hands can stay in either of the two previous positions or lift a platter overhead and exhale. Watch the hand come down by your hip and inhale up. Exhale down and inhale up. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Pause at the top, relax your shoulders, your face, your jaw, feel your legs rooted. 
You can stay with that motion or take your hand out parallel and come back in, hand out parallel, come back in. That hurts my shoulder on the right, so I'm going to do the low one, but you can do the parallel. Remember, your gaze watches the hand. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Pause at the top and release your arms, stepping back into Wuji. Feel if the breath has caused any vibrations internal. And you relax again into a full and fluid three-dimensional breath. And keeping this grounded nature of the bear, our palms turn up and we inhale and lift the heart and we become water flowing down the river. We exhale and fold, and we inhale. The heart wave lifts, and we exhale. It rolls, and we inhale and exhale. Feeling the hug of gravity on the flowing water in our bodies. Inviting space in so that we can be playful as we flow down through the river banks. How much can you flow? Let the fingers relax into the flow as if they were moving through warm water. The palms and the wrists and the elbows relax, fluid. The spine, the shoulders, the hips, fluid. Even the knees. And then inhale back up and step your right leg forward, left leg back, and pause. We're going from water back to earth, exhaling out the front knee, coming to the side hip. So we exhale out the right leg and come around to the left hip, and we circle our hands over a stone polishing the stone, feel into the stone itself, the heavy groundedness of the stone. And you can picture whatever stone you'd like to polish today. Fluid breath and motion, arms and hands relaxed as they circle. Find a rhythm with your breath. And remember, don't make your arms work too hard. Work from the lower dantian. Circle into the hip and take the arms the other direction in the circles. And let your pelvis and legs work as if fluid were pressing you forward and drawing you back. Yeah, fluid and beautiful motion. As relaxed as you can get it. So fun to see you, Sharon, in your new space. Fluid breath. And step the feet together and switch sides. Following the front leg out, we circle around towards the back hip, polishing the stone. See the rocks, the stones, that you've loved in your life. I think of those warm Yuba River rocks in the summertime. Fluid breath.
gentle circle. And then take the circles the other direction. Fluid breath and fluid motion. And come back in. Pause, feeling your relationship with Earth. Feeling into the body for water. Now let's open to sky. Heels gently together. Inhale and open your left arm and foot. And exhale in, inhale right, and exhale in. Now you're the great blue heron on the wetland. Bones light. Standing tall. Really let the weight go out of your body now and let the bones be full of air. Let them be hollow. Let your spine lengthen. And come back to your fluid three-dimensional breath. Breathe into the opening wing chest and exhale to center. Inhale, fill the stretching lung and exhale. And come back to center. And before we move on to the rest of the birds, let's harmonize the breath. Inhale, opening the arms across the heart. Exhale, gentle punch out. And then roll the arms towards earth. And roll the arms up towards heaven. And come back to stillness. And let the palms lift <clears throat> up under the heart and the elbows open. We inhale and exhale. Can the shoulders stay relaxed as you bend the knees? And lift and we inhale and exhale and inhale and stretch long and tall and inhale. And exhale. Fluid breath, fluid stretching. Head resting back, lengthening spine. And then pause in your Wuji. And let's harmonize the breath, inhaling across the heart. Exhale, it's a forced exhale as the hands punch out. All through the nostrils if that's okay for you. And then roll the arms towards earth and roll them up towards heaven and pause in your gentle wuji. And inhale, your wings open and the beak closes, fingers to thumbs and the beak opens, fingers from thumbs and we float the arms and we float the arms and we float and we float and we rest on to the heels and we see how light all of our bones can become. And we let ourselves be filled with sky. Feel yourself 
with a sense of lightness, even as your feet are rooting. Conduits of energy between earth and sky. Step your left foot gently in front of the right and let the knees bend and inhale to the toe and exhale and perhaps the toe lifts and exhale and in. And maybe your wings want to float in different directions now. Let your hands and your arms float with more freedom. Let it be your own creative dance. Because remember, this is all about getting the chi, the energy to flow to all parts of our body and being. Find the motion that will best help you do that. And then inhale up and land and come back to your breath. Three-dimensional breath deep into the body, feeling the roots of your feet, the lightness of your bones. Let the next foot step forward and exhale and inhale. Maybe the toe just comes to a point. Maybe it lifts off the floor. And you get to really dance and find freedom in your movement now. Let your arms do whatever they would like. Play in the motion. Feel for the energy moving through your unique body. And then land and harmonize the breath. And roll the arms facing the earth and lift the heart and gaze towards the heavens and come back to center and pause. Wuji, boundaryless. And let your arms swing up towards the heavens and the energy run from the lower Dantian to the heart Dantian and let the arms swing back down and the energy come back to the lower Dantian. And as we swing the arms up, we say, hung. As we swing back down, we let out an exhale. Hung. 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 Hung, 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 hung. Pause in your wuji. Feel into the whole inner landscape. Where can you relax inside your physical form? Keep looking for new places to relax. Then let your arms wrap around the full moon and let it rise in front of you and lift you skyward. And exhale, release the moon 
and let the arms float down to your sides. Wrap the hands around and inhale, let the moon lift you, rising into the heavens. <sighs> let go. And we inhale. <sighs> and this time, let your gaze lock on to your right thumb and inhale, follow the right thumb. And exhale, follow it around in its circle. Building concentration, we inhale, gaze following the right thumb. And exhale, three rounds. Inhaling. And exhaling. And then we switch to the left thumb. And inhale, gaze on the left thumb. Exhale, following it around. And we inhale. And one more cycle. And we pause in Wuji boundaries. And one more time, we open our arms wide and stretch feet deep into the earth and head high into the heaven. Let your body fill the universe. Let your skin stretch thin and the energy move through your body, loosening any stagnant energy and letting it move out. This may be locked deep in your tissue in a psoas muscle or a tight shoulder or hip. And then exhale, hands back into the heart. Come back into the seed pod of your own skin. And let's end with some gentle cranes. <laughs> but remember that they look a little more like penguins. So the hands are going to be palms back as we step forward. And we keep the legs straight and you lift the left hip and tiny step, right hip, tiny step. Step two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Then you turn your palms forward and go back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and go switch directions. And you can count on your own or just go as far as you like <laughs> and switch directions. And this should help us loosen up our hips a little and our lumbar slightly. And we go forward. And we go back. <laughs> and then we pause and feel into the body. We're working a little of those deep hips. Now, circle the knee forward, out, and open on one side. And you can stay here or you can lift the foot. Good. And then try the other side, circle the knee forward and open. Hip openers, some of you may wanna lift the knee. You can play with how high to lift it, keep the heart lifted. Okay, and land. Now, Try this out and in, circling out first and in, okay? So these are big leg cranes. We're just warming up for them. And you can stay with any of these motions. You could stay with the toe on the floor or the lifting knee. And then we try the other side. We're getting ready for our big crane steps. Okay, so the big cranes we would step one leg out and you circle it forward and then the other leg out, oops, and forward, forward and forward and forward and forward till you run out of space, then you can go back. Or in Qigong, we would probably do nine steps or some combination of threes and then we circle the other way. Feel how that opens the legs and your arms can be just expanded like wings. So we circle 
out to go back and in to go forward. Aha. And then one more time. And this is part of why I love the Qigong for yoga because look how this is warming up your hips for your standing poses. Gets us ready. And pause. Rest into your Wuji and feel for pulses inside the body. Fluid breath. Conduits of energy between earth and sky. And then step your feet wide. And turn the left foot out and take your right heel back and open into your star pose, palms up. And inhale, reach for the sky and exhale. Slow down into your Vera 2. Remember the knee opens op out over the second metatarsal. And inhale, straighten the front leg. And exhale, bend. So you're coming in and out of Vera 2. Inhaling and exhaling. And it's important to keep the knee alignment, the feet alignment, so that you're careful with that front knee. We inhale up and exhale down. And one more time. We inhale and exhale and pause. Arms opening to rest on water. Vira Bhadrasana 2. And let's inhale the back arm forward and exhale the circle. So we bring the Qigong in to meet the yoga. Inhaling and exhaling. Fluid breath. And then pause. Back fingertips lightly touching the back leg, the front palm lifting. Find your version of Dancing Warrior where you are working the body but not straining it. Where is that? Shoulder girdles relaxed. Necks long. Jaw can be unhinged. Three-dimensional breath. Feel your pose. And then exhale. Cartwheel the arms so the left hand comes to the femur, right arm to the ear. Parsvokanasana prep. Stretch from the pelvis into the earth with your feet. Some of you may come to your forearm. Some of you may come to a block. Exhale, heart towards the earth. Inhale, heart towards the heavens. And we pulse the pose. Inviting the prana, the chi, to fill us. Revitalize us and pulse it up and rainbow the top arm overhead, stretching the right side body. And exhale, float back up, Vera 2, straighten the front leg, cartwheel gently into a high trikonasana, right out of the pelvis, broad across your shoulder girdle, fluid breath. And then rooting from the pelvis, float back up and turn the left leg in and the right leg out, taking the left heel back. Open into your star pose and exhale, Virabhadrasana 2. Knee never forward of the ankle. Inhale and lift. And exhale, bend. And we inhale. And exhale. And you could just do the arms here. Inhale. Exhale. One more. And then pause in your Vera 2. Gaze out over the front fingertips and inhale the left arm around to meet the right and exhale it open. And inhale. And exhale. Keep. That right knee solid over its second metatarsal. Fluid breath. Three-dimensional breath into the low back ribs. 
a breath that will massage the kidneys and adrenal glands. And then pause in your Vera 2 and turn the front palm up as the back fingertips lightly touch the back leg. Dancing warrior broad across your shoulder girdle long from the pelvis to the top of the head. Feel the earth grounding you. The bear frolics helping you feel earth and then also become the crane or the heron. Light in your bones, spacious in your spine. And exhale forward, right hand to femur, left arm alongside the ear, and shine out from the pelvis through each limb and perhaps come lower. And exhale, heart towards earth, and inhale, heart towards the heaven. And we pulse. In yoga, it's called a sponda, the pulsation we feel with the breath and the movement. Ah, we invite that pulsation to move through us, opening river channels of energy. And when we come up this time, rainbow the top arm over and breathe into the fascial tissue of the left side body. Let the breath lift it and stretch it open. And then float back up, front leg straight. And as you're ready, cartwheel gently into your high trikonasana. Remember, you don't have to come low. Long spine out of the pelvis. Check in that your knees are not hyperextending as you plant the four corners of your feet. Beautiful. Fluid breath. And check in with those knees again as you rise back up into your star pose and turn the front leg in and step the feet together, mountain. Fluid breath. Okay, I'm getting warm enough to take off my sweater (laughs) in June in Grass Valley. All right. Feel into the body as it is now in this moment. Notice what dedicating this time does for your inner landscape. And let's bring in our chair and come to a seat with our blocks in front of us. And let's begin doing a little more yoga here. And overall feel good pose today. If this doesn't feel good to be on a chair seat, you can always do this standing, bringing your hands to a piece of furniture if you like. So rock a little sit bone to sit bone and find that place where they're comfortably planted. And let's inhale. Right arm alongside the ear, left arm long. So it's like your uh, Parsvokanasana. Some of you may want to bring a block into the inside of the leg. And we'll exhale down onto the forearm and breathe into the side body. Some people may not come that far. You may just bend your elbow. Stretch from the right sit bone through each finger. Reach through your thumb, your index, your middle, your ring, your pinky. And then broaden across your shoulder girdle, find your shoulder blades on the back and breathe into the heart. Root the right sit bone and breathe into the left armpit. Stretch in many different ways through the fascia of the body. If you'd like, you can come down to the block. Only do that if it feels like it doesn't cut off energy. And then rooting right sit bone, lift the pelvic floor, activate your core on the exhale, float back up and try the other side. Stretching up and open from the pelvis, perhaps coming to the forearm, reach through the thumb, the index, the middle, the ring, the pinky finger, rooting the sit bone away and then breathe into the stretching fascia. 
some of you may come lower to a block. Stay with your three-dimensional breath. Invite it in to massage the tight spaces. And then rooting left sit bone, lifting through the pelvic floor, exhale up and bring the blocks together in front of you. Come forward into a forward fold. Make sure your sit bones are at the front edge of the chair so that you can kind of hinge over them. And keep your knees open out over the second metatarsals. Some of you may be able to bring the blocks farther forward into a wide-legged downward dog. Honor your own spine, your own hips. Stay grounded from the knees into the feet. Invite the bear frolics to inhabit this yoga pose. Fluid, three-dimensional breath. Really use the breath to stretch the internal landscape open. And then draw your blocks back. They can be at any height. Placing your left hand on the blocks, float your right wing up. Lengthen your spine. And if you'd like to float the right wing skyward, Ground into the left arm without hyperextending the elbow and keep the knees open. It's not about how high you lift the wing. It's about integrating that shoulder. And then exhale, release, and float the left arm out, left shoulder blade onto the back, and rooting into the right arm. Maybe you open your wings. It's really good work to even just stay with the arm parallel to the floor and feel that shoulder blade on the back. That's helping you strengthen the muscles of the back. If you do twist open, keep opening the right knee behind you. Stay with your three-dimensional breath. And exhale, release, and inhale, and fold, and take your knees to the right. Bring your hands to your heart. And now channel the crane or the heron as you inhale and lengthen the spine. Invite your bones to feel very light and spacious as you begin to twist to the left, back of the right hand against the knee, left arm opening. Guide with the left shoulder, not the left wrist, and let your eyes look out the far corners into the twist. And outside, I see the St. John's wort is blooming yellow. Fluid breath. Now feel internally into the twist, how your intestines are twisted slightly, how your organs will have different pressure on them, and breathe deep into the abdomen, inviting the intestines to do their work with this support, inviting the lymph to move. Exhale, unwind. Pause to feel the vibrations of each pose. Let's take our knees to the other side. And rooting the feet like bear, inhale the spine long like crane. And exhale, slowly begin to twist, spine spacious. Bring the back of the left hand against the femur, right shoulder opening behind you, gazing out the right corners of the eyes. Tune into the breath and the contents of your abdomen. Feel how you're stretching the fascia that wraps around each organ. Yes, we want our organs to be held, but we also want some freedom of movement. Breathe deep into your intestines. Breathe deep into the back body at your kidneys. 
and exhale, hands back around to the heart. Come back to center and rest one hand inside the other, thumbs touching, and tune into your breath. Fluid breath. Three-dimensional breath. Invite the chi down towards your adrenal glands, which sit atop your kidneys and the low back. Invite the breath into the heart center simultaneously. Feel the stretch. And then cross your left leg over your right. And pause here, sitting tall, broad across your collarbones, and just hinge forward. Hinge forward so your belly lands towards your thighs. Some of you may be able to turn up your blocks and bring your fingertips to your blocks. And just let your intestines rest against the lifted femur bone and breathe into the belly. There's so much we can learn about how to use the breath in positive ways to move energy in the body. Feel the breath create pressure on belly against leg. And if you're not quite there, you could bring a block in or you could bring in a blanket, a folded blanket so that you feel a little pressure against your abdomen. Breathe into that pressure. You're also closing off energy at the groins, which when we open will cause a circulation through them. And exhale, float back up and we'll switch sides. Inhale, grow the spine long first. Broad across the collarbones, find your shoulder blades on the back and let your hyoid bone rest back and then hinge from the hips. Fingertips may come to the blocks. Breathe deep into the belly. Deep into that compressed groin. Fluid breath. Inviting a little pressure on the intestines, on the lymph system in the abdomen. Notice if you have better bowel movements today after the twisting and the compression. And exhale, float back up. And switch legs again. You can stay with the cross leg or you can bring the left ankle over the right femur sitting in your figure four. If you do this <clears throat> position, flex your left foot. Inhale, lengthen the spine and exhale. Hinge only as far as the hip hinges. Don't cat curl your lumbar spine. And don't throw your head forward. So a lot of times I see this. People hinge forward and then they drop their head here. Try to keep a long spine that honors the curves of the spine. And breathe into the opening hip. And come only to as far as you can relax the tissue of the hip as you breathe into it. Then we're much less likely to strain this outer knee ligament, the lateral collateral ligament. So when I do the foot and knee workshop, I'll be talking about this. It's why the flexed foot is so important here. It will keep you from straining the outer knee. We need to know these rules in yoga so that we don't injure ourselves. Fluid breath. I don't know if they're rules so much as tools. Exhale back up and switch sides. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Broad across the collarbones. Good, mom. Shoulder blades on your back body. Exhale, hinge slightly forward. 
Keep those natural curves to your spine and breathe deep into the hip tissue. Feel the tissue of the hip. And if it says, ouch, that's too much, back off a little. Listen to the intelligence of the body. Remember that your right foot is flexed to support the knee. If you feel strain in the knee, bring the ankle a little farther over, come closer to the cross-legged position. Fluid breath. Ah, I see you hips. I'm honoring you with my breath. And then exhale, rise up. Okay, now I'd like us to do a little stretch of the front fascia of the feet. So you're just going to bring one foot behind you. This isn't coming towards the camel pose like we often do. Instead, the foot just comes under and then you slowly bring it forward, keeping pressure on the front of the foot to stretch the fascia. And go slow as you bring the foot forward to decide how far forward you should come. Keep the heart lifted. Keep the shoulder blades on your back so that you're practicing postural alignment as you stretch this fascia of the foot. And slowly bring the foot forward. If you come into a cramp, that's your body saying a little too far. Fluid breath. Heart lifted. Remember the crane in your spine. You may lean back a little even as you bring the foot forward. Lift the heart. Broad across the collarbones. And then release this foot and try the other side. Start with the foot way back and slowly draw it forward. I'm... The more research I do on feet, the more I realize it's tight fascia from our wearing of shoes that a lot of times causes the misalignment in the feet we have in our culture. It doesn't exist in some part of the wor world. There aren't hammer toes. There aren't bunions. So we draw the foot forward. We keep lengthening the spine. We breathe three-dimensionally into the torso. And apply as much pressure down onto the foot as feels right for you. Don't overdo it, especially if this is your first time doing this exercise. Maybe you sway the spine a little bit and you feel that sway down into the tissue of the foot. And then release. And now lift the foot and spread your toes and try to bring your fingers between your toes. You can hold the ankle with the other hand and let the foot circle at the ankle. And circle the other way. And then press your toes into the fingers like you're squeezing your toes towards each other and then spread your fingers wide, spreading the toes. And bring them together and stretch and together and stretch. Stretching open the fascia of the toe box. And then just for the love of it, bring your hands so that your thumbs touch the sole of the foot and just massage for a moment. The fascia on the bottom of the foot has an impact on the fascia in the rest of the body. Real gentle if you have any plantar fascia issues. Those of you who don't can do a little more firm stretch. And then just play through the knuckles of the toe box. Like let them wiggle a little bit. Wiggle the toes. Massage the arch again. And release. Bring the foot up to the other side. And stretch the toes open and try to get the fingers in between. It may just be the tips of your fingers that fit. And then circle at the ankle. I like this image of the, the bones in the kind of arch of your foot. There are many of them. 
are like a stack of marbles and we want them to all glide over each other. And a lot of times the fascia makes that hard. Circle the other way. And then hug your toes into your fingers and stretch your fingers wide apart. And hug and stretch and hug and stretch and hug and stretch. And then release and massage the sole of your foot. Ah, yes. And then place your foot back on the ground. Come to standing and bring your chair so that your hands can rest on the seat. You come into your tabletop. Feel the soles of your feet on the floor, ankles right under sit bones, and roll up onto the balls of your feet, and roll back to your heels, and roll the toes up, and roll up, and roll back. And we stretch the fascia from the feet into the ankles. We strengthen the arches of the feet. And then land your feet, find your four corners, lift your toes, lift your arches, relax the toes, and float one foot up behind you, Virabhadrasana three. Stretch the leg out, toes pointing towards the floor, more aware of your feet now. You can stay here with both hands on the chair or release the hand of the standing leg and float that wing up onto your back. Stay here, activate the core underneath the front spine and perhaps come to the fingertips on the chair. If you'd like, perhaps lift that hand up, that arm by your ear. So you're creating an L with your arms and a kind of L with your legs. And release the hands back to the chair and step down and inhale a cow. And exhale a cow. And take a few of those with your breath, letting the spine undulate with your breath. Stretch the tailbone away from the head in both positions. Really feel into the inner landscape. And then come back to neutral and roll up onto the balls of your feet and roll back to the heels and lift your toes and roll and lift, roll and lift. Well, maybe you can come farther up onto the toes, maybe not, but we try to work these muscles in the feet a little bit, stretch the fascia open and land. And then as you're ready, lift your other leg. Virabhadrasana three, a tabletop at your sacrum, long neck, gaze down. And as you're ready, perhaps you release the standing leg arm and float it up. Perhaps you come to the other hand fingertips or float that arm up in an L, pausing wherever is best for you. Feeling into both your feet and release and inhale your cow and exhale your cat, fluid breath. And then bend your knees and inhale your hands to your heart, Utkatasana, and exhale, gently twist one direction and inhale to center and exhale the other way. Those of you with osteoporosis, we don't twist as far. Fluid breath. Keeping the knees centered and the legs still, we let the upper body move. Let's release the arms at center and inhale Utkatasana. Pause for a moment, broad across your shoulder girdle, and then inhale, lift skyward. Interlace the fingers, thumbs to the base of the skull, stretch the neck, rest the head back. Standing back bend, root the tailbone. 
and breathe into the three dimensions of your torso. See if you can breathe the spine a little longer and perhaps unfurl your arms and stretch the side bodies from the outer edges of the feet through each fingertip. And exhale, hands to the heart, relax into your mountain pose. fluid breath. And as you're ready, let's come to the floor. Please bring in two blocks or a bolster if that's more comfortable for you. Please have blankets ready. You may want your chair for the final pose. I'm going to use a bolster actually. So I'm going to invite you up into, I'm going to use blocks for the first one because I'm going to invite you into legs into the air. So you don't want your head on a pillow yet. So we'll lift up and bring the blocks in from each side. If you only have one block, you can put one block under your sacrum. Start with the blocks on low and feel that in your body. A supported bridge pose. This is a great place to practice three-dimensional breath. So take a few three-dimensional breaths into the whole circumference of the torso. And then if you'd like to lift up onto the balls of your feet and fold the blocks in towards one another and rest your sacrum on the blocks, fluid breath. And then float one leg towards the sky and the other and let your feet rest high. So we did a lot of standing and sitting in class today. A lot of fluid lymph work. So let's do just a little more of that. Opening your right leg forward and left leg long, come into a gentle bicycle. Fluid and slow. Feel how, again, you're pumping the lymph at the groin, inviting the lymph to flow down the legs. Stay with your fluid breath. Feel how the blood easily flows from heart into the glands of the neck and the head. And take your bicycles backwards. This work also helps you to strengthen your core. Stay with your fluid breath deep into the body. And then lift both legs skyward and take the legs wide. Go only as wide as is comfortable in your body and flex and point your feet. Again, stretching the fascia up the length of the legs. So a lot of uh, people want to do Upta Vista Konasana, seated, wide-legged forward fold. <clears throat> and that pose um, can end up putting a lot of strain on the low back. But if we do it upside down, we have better ability to kind of watch the lumbar and when we have it lifted on props usually you can maintain more of your lumbar curve exhale bring the legs back together if that's not true for you then you can bend your knees when you open into the wide-legged position so try that opening and see if that's better for some of you so when we do this pose you can either have the legs straight or the knees bent do what's best for your low back and hips and then exhale, draw the legs back together and float one foot to the floor and then the other. And lengthen one leg out over the prop if that feels okay to you. And if not, stay in the bridge. Some of you may wanna stretch your arms overhead. 
and breathe deep into the stretch of the psoas pathway. Fluid breath, relaxing into the stretch on the exhales and really stretching on the inhale. And then exhale, step that side back in, try the other side. Step that side back in and gently lift up off your props, lower your pelvis. And if you'd like to come into a Supta Baddha Konasana, now bring your bolster around to open the other edge of the spine. <clears throat> so we'll bring the bolster in and a pillow. If some of you feel like, oh, I'm on my feet all day today, I need to have my legs up. Feel free to do legs up the wall or legs onto a piece of furniture. Or also feel free to take a simple Shavasana. Whatever's best for you. We did the hip opening and forward folding, twisting, and some back bending today. A lot of fluid movement for the body. Now we find a comfortable position where we can rest and restore. Make sure that you're warm enough. And relax into the hug of gravity. Feel that warm hug. And perhaps open your heart to sky. Our nervous system is healthier if it recognizes our rootedness. <clears throat> so if it can feel the hug of gravity, it's more likely to relax and allow for fluid three-dimensional breath. That said, if we become too heavy and grounded, we become lethargic. So we breathe some sky and some fire even into our restorative pose. Allowing for a balance of groundedness and openness and life force energy. See if you can let go into the hug of gravity and the openness of sky.
let go into the waves of breath. Feel for any muscles in your body that are still holding residual tension that don't need to and invite them to let go. To be held instead of holding. Now gently invite energy back into your fingers and your toes. And as you're ready, move and stretch in whatever way feels right for your body today. And then as you're ready, you may roll over and rest a moment. And come up to a comfortable seat. Let's sit for a moment together. And feel into your body at the end of a practice. Realizing that you've done more than stretch and strengthen muscle and bone. You've moved your lymph and your breath and your blood. You've wrung out your intestines a little bit and your organ. You've invited blood flow into the glands of the neck and head. Let's inhale, hands to our hearts. May we maintain our awareness of our breath this week. Inviting deeper breaths when we need to relax our nervous system. 
inviting fluid three-dimensional breaths whenever we think of it. And may we honor ourselves for making it to class. Namaste. Thank you all for being here.